Good day and welcome to this presentation covering a music streaming server implemented in the Go language. This is a continuation of the previous tutorial C++ music streaming that I've made. If you haven't seen this video, I would recommend starting with that one. It covers the design concept of the server client solution. Before we dive into the Go implementation, I would like to mention my webpage, jimmyjansson84.me. I've got a lot of other tutorials covering graphics, OpenGL, and gaming techniques. The link to the repository where the music server project is available can be found here as well. There is a great tutorial on how to get up and running with Go on Linux at this webpage. If you are new to Go, this is where you want to start. The installation just takes a couple of minutes and is pretty straightforward. Here is a list of what I aim to cover today. If you have never written any Go before, you might want to start with a basic tutorial first. This video will, however, not require you to have in-depth knowledge of Go, and if you've ever programmed before, you will probably be able to follow along pretty easily. We will cover how to work with TCP IP and then how to handle incoming song requests from a client and stream the music data to that client. We will be able to use the C++ client we created in the previous video tutorial to talk with this server. Each module in Go needs a file that describes its dependencies as well as what version of Go is needed in order to run and build it. It's sort of similar to CMake files. The very first line here is a package declaration. For an executable, we need to declare a main package, which is what we do here. For our project, it's real simple. We only have one module, the music server module. Okay, now we are moving on to the main Golang file, musicserver.go. Go uses a concept called modules to declare what dependency you have in your code. I think this was probably inspired by Python that uses a similar concept. As a C++ developer, I would say this is sort of the same as include statements. We simply declare which code libraries we will be using. Our server will be using the format package, FMT, which covers basic functionality for working with strings and printing them to the console. IO util is what we will use to read files. The net library gives us access to an API for the TCP IP stack. And finally, encoding binary provides us with functionality that we will need for serialization. The next thing we do is declare an enumerable that lists the different kind of network packets our server can handle. Enumerables in the Golang is declared by using constants. The IOTA keyword is used to start at zero and then have the following enums increase by one. We then proceed to define a data structure that will hold our network packet, the information we either send or receive over the network. The first variable, packet type, should be one of the enumerables described above. The second variable, data size is the size of the packet. This allows us to store various types of information in the data variable, which is our third member. The maximum amount of information stored in data is 256 bytes, minus the two previous member variables, packet type and data size. So the whole packet will be of a fixed 256 bytes size. Okay. Let's have a look at how to read back data from the network. We will use our packet structure here. The first thing we do is create a slice. A slice in Go is, to put it simple, a dynamically sized array. The buff variable here will act as an array holding 256 bytes of data. Next, we read from the TCP IP socket using the net library function read. The read statement here is wrapped in a loop to make sure we always read back the entire packet. If you're running on a local host, you will most likely always get the entire packet with just one call, 
but in the real world scenario, we cannot assume that. After we read the package from the network, we now need to transform it into our package structure. This is where we use the functionality from the encoding binary library. The code for sending the packet is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is serialize the packet structure into a byte array and then send it using the net library write function. Now that we have functions to send and receive data, let's have a look at how we can transfer the cover art. The first thing we need to do is to read back the entire cover art file using the IOUtil library function read file. After that, we use a loop to transfer all the cover art and chunks of data that will fit into our 256 bytes packet. We create packets of type packet cover art and fill them out with the data, and then we simply hand them over to send packet. At the end, we send a packet of type packet cover art end, which lets the client know that all the cover art has now been transferred. We also need to be able to send the actual music that should be played, which happens in the send music function. First, we open the music file that we want to send and read all the contents using read file. Then we create a packet of type packet music stream size. This packet will contain an integer that tells the client how big the music file is. This is an other approach than in the send cover art function, where we instead send the packet at the end, informing the client when all the cover art has been transferred. The packet music stream size packet is also sent using the send packet function. Next, we enter a loop that will send chunks of music data to the client. This is the same as with the cover art, just a different packet. Here we use the packet music stream. Before we look at the main function of the server, let's talk quickly about defer. Defer is a keyword in Golang that executes the statement after the keyword defer when the surrounding function returns. It is similar to the destructor pattern that is sometimes used in C++, where you put a section of code you want to have executed in the destructor function and then create an instance of a class on the stack. Once that object goes out of scope, the destructor will always be called. This is basically what defer does in the Golang as well. It's a simple way of preventing human mistakes, where someone writes a piece of code and then forgets to make an important call to something in the end, typically something that is supposed to release some sort of resource. Okay, let's have a look at the main function of the server. This is the entry point of our server, where it starts. We start by registering that we want to listen for incoming TCP IP communication on port 3017. Then we use the defer keyword to make sure that the connection is closed once we exit the server. Next, we wait for an incoming connection by calling accept from the net library. And once we have a client that is connected, we enter the main loop. We wait for an incoming song request using read packet. If we got something, we process it in the switch case. Now let's try it out. Let's start by building the music server by running go build music server. Then let's start the music server. And finally, let's use the already built C++ client to connect and make a song request. We can now look at the, what happens at the server. We see that the client has connected and that the cover art and music has been sent over. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like. What do you think of the Go language? If you had any experience with it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Again, thanks for taking the time, and if you want to get the source code, the repo is in the description.